A material decides what an object is made up of and how it appears in the 3D world. So it's crucial to make sure that the material looks good and realistic in order to achieve good results. And today we are going to learn how to properly use the principal shader and what things to avoid to create good looking physically accurate materials inside Blender. So let's jump right into it. Hey what is going on artists, Abhishek here and welcome to CG Infinite. In this tutorial we will learn how to create material in Blender properly and how to correctly use the principal shader. And in the end of this video I will also share a very important tip for creating a realistic material. So in older versions of Blender we were using multiple shaders to create a good looking material. But version 2.79 comes with a really powerful all-in-one smart shader called principal shader. Now this shader itself is more versatile and physically accurate but there are some very important things we need to understand first before using it. So let's see what those things are. The metallic slider decides whether an object is made up of metal or non-metal. So zero means object is dielectric or non-metal and 1 means the object is metal. But you can also choose values between 0 and 1 and you will get a mixture of non-metal and metal. But in real world it's not possible that an object is made up of both non-metal and metal. So it's important to set this value to either 0 to create a non-metallic object or to 1 to create a metallic object. So avoid using values between 0 and 1 when you can. This part is really important if you want to create a realistic material. In principal shader we have two specular sliders, specular and specular tint. The specular slider controls how reflective the surface of an object is. I will turn down the roughness for a demonstration. So if I turn this up you can see the surface is now 100% reflective. And if I turn this down, the surface is not reflective anymore. Next we have specular tint. The specular tint tints the reflection using base color. In other words, it takes the color from the base color and adds that color to the reflection. So if I increase this value, you can see now the reflections have a color to them. And if I decrease this value, the reflections look more white. So whatever color I choose from the base color, specular tint adds that color to the reflection of the object. Okay? But you should not change the values of any of these sliders if you are creating a realistic material. And I will explain why. See both of these values affect only the dielectric specular reflections. That means these sliders only affect the reflections of non-metallic objects. They do not have any effect on the metallic objects as metals are already fully reflective. You should not change the value of specular slider because the default value is actually correct for majority of the dielectric objects. So leave this slider as it is. And the specular tint value also should not be changed because the dielectric objects have colorless reflection. That means they do not have any color to their reflection. Only metals do have colored reflections. So this slider is actually physically incorrect. That may sound a little bit weird but it is there if you want to fake the appearance of the material. So you can change any of these values if you want more control over the appearance of the material but just don't do this. Right? Do not set the specular value all the way to the zero because every material always do have some amount of reflectivity. So yeah. but. If you are creating a realistic material which is physically more accurate, do not change any of these values. But without using the specularity slider, how can we change the specularity of the object? By using the roughness slider. The roughness value decides how rough the surface of an object is. So if the roughness is really high, you will get more blurry reflections. And if the roughness is very really low, you will get really sharp reflections. That is because when light rays hit the smooth surface, they get reflected and we get a sharp reflection. But if the surface is rough, 
the reflected rays get scattered in all directions and we then get a blurry reflection. Now I'm gonna give you an important tip that I was talking about in the beginning of the video. And that is creating a proper lighting setup. Using proper lighting is very important because no matter how physically accurate your material is, if your lighting is not proper, the material will not look the way you want, especially if your material contain any bump or normal map. So using 3-point lighting setup or SDR lighting will tremendously enhance the appearance of the material and you will be able to see how your material will look in the final render. So that's it guys, these are the things that you should remember if you want to create any type of material inside Blender properly. So please like this video if you learned something from this tutorial, it would be really awesome. And subscribe if you aren't already and don't forget to hit the bell so you will get notified when I upload a new video to YouTube. Thank you so much for watching guys, stay tuned for more tutorials and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care and don't forget. Keep creating.